The brain of man is the principal factor to all his gains in life. So your gain is brain determined. Or your gains are brain determined. Every addition is a result of intuition. Every, every progress begins with mental process. And we've been trying to look at what this mind is worth. We've gone around all the areas that we can touch. In the last service on Thursday, I began with reasoning. I thought on reasoning that the mind has ability to reason. Ability to do what? Ability to reason. And to reason means a capacity to think logically, rationally, and analytically. That's all that reason will stand for. And that simply defies intelligence. The capacity to think logically, rationally, and analytically, and that simply defines intelligence. Simply defines what? It simply defines intelligence. You can be educated without being intelligent. Education is a function of training. Intelligence is a function of reasoning. So there are two different things. Education is a function of training, but intelligence is a function of reasoning. Education is mostly formally acquired, but intelligence is a result of personal development. It's a result of mental personal development. Please don't misunderstand. I mean you can go to school without being intelligent. I mean you can be certificated without being intelligent. I mean you can have notes on papers and still be a dull head. When it comes to practical integration of facts in that getting results. And I believe that um, That's why, even physiologically, there is a portion of the brain that is responsible for learning. For what? For learning. It has ability to coordinate parts to help you make quality decisions. And God believes in reasoning. He said, come now and let us reason together. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come now and let us reason together. The more you reason, the higher you rise. Come now and let us reason together. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 and verse 19 said, If you be willing and obedient to this commandment, you shall eat the good of the land. You shall eat what? The good of the land. So the good in your land is not accessible without reasoning. Without what? Without reasoning. Without engaging logical, rational, analytical thinking. The good is there, but you can't touch it because it is only accessible by reasoning. Come now and let us reason together. In Isaiah 41, verse 21, it says, For this your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. I'm drawing the conclusion that every top thinker is a star. And every star is a top thinker. Every top thinker is a star. And every star is a top thinker. It means the more you think, 
the higher you fly. They asked Jesus one day, we call this woman in adultery, and the Lord Moses said, You should stone such a person today. And the Bible said, Jesus bent down and was writing on the floor. If he said, That's not so, they will kill him before he gets to the cross, because Moses was the God of all Israel. If he said, Kill him, they said, Can you see? He said, Mother, when the Messiah will come, he will come to mother, he will come to save people. So he turned down and put the forces of reasoning together. He said, these guys are very tricky. <laughs> if I say that is wrong, they say it's against Moses and he must be put to death. For anyone who goes against Moses must die. If he said, kill him, Moses is right. They say he's a murderer. Didn't you say that before? And if I kill him, that is all. <laughs> so? He is too bad and he found his way out of this wicked hands. And he lifted up his head. Any of you that has never said, let him be the first to cast his stone. Oh, God saved me today. And one by one, they met and went their way. That's engaged in the force of reason. Should we pay tribute to Jesus our Lord? Someone there with a coin? Who is the scripture of this? Caesar! Let's hear what you say. We are dead today. Now give unto Caesar what is Caesar, and unto God what is God. That's a very, very powerful answer because for Caesar and the coin, whose are they? The art is the Lord. The full of the world and all that. Yeah, yeah. So give it to Caesar. I collect it plus Caesar. <laughs> Did you understand what I'm saying? God is way out of the heart. Nothing is a substitute for reasoning in the covenant work. Nothing. You can pass your brain off. If you are not a thinker, you will end up in the pit. Reason. The good in the lab is accessible to thinkers. The good in the land is accessible to thinkers. Somebody said something and I love it. They call his name Rand. A W N Rand. He said, Wealth is the product of man's capacity to think. Wealth is what? The product of man's capacity to think. That is success, as it were, is a function of thinking. It's a word. It's a product of man's capacity to think. Man's capacity to think. And that will be strange because there's a man called Bill Gates, popular guy still there. Now, as of last year, the fortune of his company was put at $100 billion. And his own personal fortune was $46 billion. Hello? And I told the story before. One day, as a grown up child, the mother was looking for him. Bill! Bill! Where are you? Bill! Where are you? And we found him, we found the boy busy looking through some things very objectively and concentratedly. So what are you doing? He said, I'm thinking, don't you think? <laughs> That's a very graphic illustration of wealth as a product of thoughts. The more thoughtful you are, the wealthier. Amen? The higher, the more successful you are most likely to become. But there are some people who are warriors. I'm using the word worry, like you use the word may and may. Hello? Warriors, and they think they are thinkers. Hello? There are many warriors 
who fails to be thinkers. But because they keep real real, then you know they are not thinkers, they are world leaders. Is that right? Because world is real men out, thinking lift men up. Some think they are problems, others think the solutions to their problems. Can you get a difference now? Some think they are problems, and others think solutions. Many think problems, so they become warriors. Because the more you think around the problem, the bigger it becomes. What you focus on simply will locate more details of it. So when you center out problems, you become more problematic. You center out solutions, you begin to enjoy more promises. Hello? So please note that um, your mind is designed for thinking. For what? For thinking. It's designed primarily for reasoning. That's why it is given the ability for logical, rational, analytical thinking. So it has that capacity, it has that ability. So what the said this morning on activating that mind, you know, getting it to produce according to its purpose. Its purpose is to help you logically, rationally, analytically look at issues in order to get at results. So how do we activate the mind to get at the desired results? The mind needs to be activated, otherwise it remains unproductive. Just like you put some granulated sugar in a cup of tea, that does not give you the taste you want until you stir it. It is the stirring that spreads the effect of the deposit. There's a deposit of intelligence in everything, particularly you, a covenant child, because you have the very mind of Christ, the very force behind the whole of creation. There's a rich deposit of intelligence. In fact, uh, Job 32 verse 8 says, there is a spirit in man. Another translation says, there is a force, there is a spirit in man, the force of intelligence. The force of what? Yeah. He said the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding, fires them into understanding. Causing the force of intelligence, I like that translation. There is a spirit in man. There is a spirit in man, spirit. He said, I mean that it's a force of intelligence built into the mind to make up of man and the inspiration of the Almighty giving them understanding. There is a force in man, a spirit in man, the force of intelligence. A regular person says that it's a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giving them understanding. But it caused that spirit, the force of intelligence. So how do I get the actual effect and maximize the effect of this force of intelligence that is built up in my makeup? It's there. In Second Timothy chapter one verse six, it's a way for I put your remembrance that the still out the gift of God that is in you, which was given you by the labor of my hands. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, verse 7, and of love, and of a sound mind. So all these forces have to be steered off. The force of intelligence needs a steering off. It means it requires a provocation, something to set it into motion. We have to put your remembrance that you steer up the gift of God that is in you by the putting of my hands. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power 
and of law and of what? A sound mind. And of a sound mind. And of a sound mind. No matter how anointed you are, if you are going in for a meeting, there is a steering that takes place before you arrive there. If there is no steering, you appear they are dormant. You appear they are helpless. There is a steering with charging. Come and say charging. Yeah. The charging could be by meditation. It could be by concentration. It could be by praying in the spirit. It could be by rigorous searching. It could be by fervent and prayer. But there is a form of charging that helps your delivery in the school of power. There is a form of charging that takes place. The same way in the school of wisdom, a charging is required for maximum delivery. To get at the best. So let's look at some of those things in this first service I'd like to talk about, the first one. Mental attention. Come on, say mental attention. We are confronted with certain challenges. Give the situation the required mental attention for solution. Give it the concentration required, the mental concentration. The mental processing. Because there is no problem that has ever come to a man, but as it come out to a man, but God is faithful. We will not suffer you to be tempted beyond what you can handle. And in the same temptation, we will provide the way of escape that will be able to deal with it. First Corinthians 10, 13. So you don't have a special problem if only you will care to give it the right mental attention. And I mean it. I said in one of my lectures recently that time is the greatest asset in the school of wisdom. What is the greatest asset? Time. Time is all you need to progress in the school of intelligence. And thank God, time is all you have, even if you don't have any other thing. The rich and the poor have 24 hours daily. The king and the slave have 24 hours daily. It's an asset of equality, and yet it's the greatest asset in the school of wisdom. So how much attention, mental attention, you give the issues of your life, the time is how much results you will never expect from it. The political son came to himself one day, and the moment he thought through his problem into a solution. Boy, you want to die here? He said, no, sure, I don't like to die here. So what options do you have? If I don't know where I'm going, I should know where I'm coming from. I know how many hired servants my father has that have a lot to eat and to spare. I must say, die here struggling to steal from the food of the pigs, raw cassava. A boy, but you already got your inheritance and left. So that has not erased my root. I can't tell you my father. He's still going to be my father. And he's still my father. I will arise and go. And I'll say to my father, I'm back. I am not one to call yourself, but I will be more satisfied. I will be better off as your servant than die here without anybody knowing where I came from. Now, he didn't pray, he didn't fast, he only processed the problem into a promise. And he arrived at prominence. He only gave his problem the mental attention required and he converted the situation to a solution. The Bible said he came to himself. You remember that in Luke chapter 15? He said, what? he came to himself. He came to himself and said, this day must have an answer. This situation must have a solution. This situation must have a solution. No, in the moment, he came out of it. Just through mental processing. 
He came out of it gallantly, colorfully, gloriously. Every time you see a man say, yeah, it is all myself, it's only a talk of the lips. Uh, and if you think that your wife is supporting you, it's only <laughs> it's only a drama. It's only what? Uh, there is nothing you can do to make a mother forget the child. I mean, by telling forever, you want to enter this house? Say yes, you want to enter the house? <laughs> yeah. It's only giving you a psychological booster, it's not in your support. That's why when children play foul in those days and they say they won't eat tonight. Are you following? They won't eat. They are giving all this time. The mother will wake up in the night and check whether the man has slept and tip to where the head is. Take your food, lock your door behind the night. <laughs> because the mother wants me. <laughs> and believe me, the mother too wasn't comfortable, but how can I upset it already? I can I not say it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure this baby that I went through the psychology of parenthood and concluded it doesn't matter what. I can't imagine my father say, no way. I can't imagine him say, no assets. But the father was at the gate. Where would this my son come back? What would have happened to him? He drew a very fantastic conclusion and he had the positive manifestation. In Luke chapter 14, verse 28, he said, Which of you wanted to be the tower? will not first sit down and pay through. And do what? Oh, yeah, and count the cost. Pay through. Pay through the objective. Pay through the, the purpose, the plan. Pay through Luke 14, verse 28. The other one is Luke chapter 15. You know, the Luke 2 is pay through. So you need a sitting down. Come and say sitting down. And then you need a coming to yourself concerning every issue of your life. I will do it with ease because I sat down to think through what that law actually represents. Whose benefit is given? And I discovered it was my benefit. Who loses what I don't do? I discovered I am the only one losing. My not giving will not make me fool because it will attract no reward. But giving is not enough to give me prosperity because God has said He will prosper whatsoever I do. So the doing is what provides the avenue for the blessings. No, God could have entrusted me to be this church because it's a way of him that trusts a man, and I'm a man. Will God be ruling himself? <laughs> so, so it's not trusting me to get the job done, but I need them to get anything done in my life. Now with that, I draw a conclusion. It is to my benefit and must be considered a privilege. So come on, let's go. So I have no stress or strain doing it. Because I've looked through it and found out that this is to my benefit. And God has nothing to gain by my doing it, neither has me anything to lose by my not doing it. That situation will bow to mental attention. Because there's a way out of it. Come and see, there's a way out of it. You know what Daniel said when that horrible decree went out that they should slay all the soothsayers I and mean, all the magicians and the astrologers? and the chargers and the wise men. He said, give us time. Give us what? Daniel 2.16. Give us time. Give, all we need is time. In the school of wisdom, time is our greatest asset. Give us time and we'll give you the answer. Give us time and we'll do what? Give you the answer. Give us time and we assure you of the answer. Give us time and we'll get the solution too. 
This of time, it is not an impossible question you are asking. If it's not available with man, it's not available with God. You can't find it by, you know, thinking through, we find it by calling for help from heaven. I will get to the answer of the same, but give us time. They had the time and they got the answer. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's look briefly then in uh, chapter 2 of Daniel. Come and say, Time is all I need. And blessed be God. Time is all I have. No one has more time than I do. Everyone on earth has 24 hours a day. And God gave me 24 hours also. So I don't have problem with time. If you tell your neighbor you can think through it. There is no impossible question in the world. You can think through it. If it's not available with man, it must be available with your God. To whom you have access by the blood of the Lamb. So you are a peculiar person. Daniel chapter 2. Then Daniel answered with counsel, verse 14, and wisdom to Antioch, the captain of the king's host, which was given gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Antioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. And then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would do what? Give him time. And that he would show the king the interpretation. All you need is what? Time. Give him time. We'll give him time. Then Daniel went him to his house. He went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel, what? In the night. He secured the time and gave the subject all the concentration it requires. He gave it all of the attention it requires. They call for help. This thing requires a supernatural touch. But the interpretation was channeled to him in a night vision. He could comprehend what it was because he was mentally alert. He was mentally involved. He was mentally committed. Give us time. And under 24 hours, they got the impossible answer. They got what? The, uh, the answer that was thought impossible by all men. All the wise men said, no man can get it. But by putting their time to the best of use, by giving it the mental attention it requires, by securing help from above to which was our passes, they got an answer there. Every situation of your life will find practical solution this month. <laughs> Every situation of your life will find a practical solution this month. You have cried enough. It's time to think through. It's time to think through. It's time to engage the forces of intelligence. It's time to steer up the gift of a sound mind. It's time to get at the answer through mental processing of the situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mental attention. The Bible said maturity comes by reason of use. It says some meat belongs to them who by reason of use have their senses exercised. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. They have their senses exercised. So by mental attention I mean exercising your mind towards your desired result. Hebrews 5 14. Exercising your mind towards your desired result. Who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. They are able to locate what is best for them through mental exercise. It is common knowledge 
that no one excels in any field without appropriate exercise. So it takes mental exercise to enjoy mental dignity. It requires mental exercise to enjoy dignity. Let's look in chapter 14 of Luke. Luke 14. Verse 28, for which of you intending to build a tower, sit up not down first. Did you see that? You see down first. And counted the cost, whether you have sufficient to finish it. Sit down first and look at what counts most. In your quest to achieve your desired end, what is it that matters towards this set objective? How do I get at where I want to go? What does it take to get there? Sit not down first. So every tower builder is a seated thinker. Sit down first. It is a knee down first, fast out first. Sit down first. If you must successfully build that tower, you sit down first. Not sitting down and looking, sitting down and counting. Sitting down and counting. Sitting down and calculating. Sitting down and mentally processing. Are you going? I was privileged to look at two cases yesterday, and the two cases were given practical mental solutions. Hello? Somebody was said to be sick. So I called the doctor. I said, doctor, talk to this person for me. So that I won't think maybe I'm just trying to avoid and dodge spending money. And listen to it. Without any comment to the doctor, the doctor said, it's a case of anxiety. Hello? And I said, good. That makes it easy for me because that's what I'm doing presently. One, the causes of anxiety. What will be the cause of anxiety? The failures of the past. The hurts of the past. But thank God they are past. If you don't look away from the past, you pass away with it. You say, hmm. I said the concerns of the present. The pressing probing challenges of the hour. And that is mystified by the fear of failure. If it doesn't work, how do I go? How do I move? I said, why are you are permitted to fail seven times? How many times? And you have not paid once, you are not crying, you are now vibrating. So the righteous man follows seven times and rises up again. The fear of failure is what makes a victim of failure. But when you don't fear failure, you might be gallant success. And I said the uncertainty of the future is number three, the root of anxiety. But that is foolishness in the sense that nobody has the future yet. And the future is the picture you paint of yourself. And that the happiest people in the world are people who live in their future. Who live what? Like I am. I live in my future a lot. <laughs> I'm just celebrating my future. But I don't see any problem. Uh, whatever is past, is past. I don't have to bother my head about it. Somebody slapped me yesterday. Even if you cry today, I say remove it. It's a peace deposit. 
if we fix the person, you don't to going to agree with that and then move forward. And make sure next time you position yourself in a way that you will not be slapped. That the hand of the slapper will not be able to reach your cheek. That's what you do. <laughs> you study the circumstances of the slap now to avoid future slaps. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, that was in the morning, when the late afternoon hour, and by the time the sun came back in the evening, he met in his world. He said, this is a different mother. The continent took on a, an, a practical new power all the day few hours. She was made to paint a picture of the future she desires. Why not look at you carrying your grandchildren and look at your son buying a new car to change your old one for you? And look at your son building a house and you are present when they are dedicating it. Not because the future is a drama of the mind. What's the future, sir? It's a drama of the mind. Very, very intelligent actors paint the brightest pictures of it. Hello? They were in one of the president's homes in one of the African countries sometimes back. And I said to myself, but I saw this a long time. I saw it when? When I dreamed in the night, I was painting the picture of my work with God that will make the kings of the earth require my attention. Require what? So it wasn't a surprise to me. The picture of your future is your making. So to now paint a picture of fear and uncertainty is your fault. So I told her, I said, you are not sick, so you must go and resume your work immediately. I shall be off duty for how long? Because they even call you sick, it's enough to remain a sickler. Let's go and see her because she's, she's not very well. <laughs> it becomes a title. So you have an entitlement of disease, you know? <laughs> and by the end, the same person is now planning what she wants to be doing to, you know, extra insight began to come in. Now that she agrees, she won't die. So life is about. Sit down first. Sit down first. And sit down to count. Sit down to think. Think through your set objective. It is the easiest thing to accomplish. Say, help me, Lord. It is my prayer that this month you will engage in practical mental exercise that will lead to vital solutions in the various areas of your life. Yeah. Are you looking through that? Yeah. Our board meetings here can be very short because the objective is straight. What is the objective of this meeting? Everybody is traveling into Kaduna at a time. What is the objective? One, two, three, four. What do we need to get it done? One, two, three, four. And then we just sit down the meeting. In two hours, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are true. Because the mind has been put to work. We are not coming with empty brain. The people involved have been given information ahead of time and they know the areas of attention and everybody is processing what would be the best approach to executing that objective. Sit down first. To my mind, I think when you wake up in the morning, you should sit down first before you need that. <laughs> sit down first before you need that. I mean, like, I see people kneeling down on the floor to pray, and I ask them in the whole Bible, what does kneeling down contribute to prayer? Hello? You know, our religion thrives on tradition. Thrives on what? Can't you even sit down first and ask, okay, what is this leaning down doing to prayer? And most people are slain in the sleep. Hello, I'm not saying slain in the spirit. They are slain in the sleep. When they need that, I... Uh, no, first of all. Uh, <laughs> but since you can't sleep away on motion, why don't you have a walk in prayer? And keep awake, except you are anointed sleeper. There is no way you can be walking and sleep awake, particularly as an adult. Hello. 
And if you go to many churches where they must need that, you find that about 75 percent have slipped, slipped away. They are falling on that sleeve. <laughs> Great! You go know, there, and then they have more people, waking people, than people waking them on their way. So why don't you let all of them be on their feet so they can be all awake? The people waking them on their feet, they thought they would stick like this. <laughs> then we shake his head small. <laughs> For you to move and carry on with this name. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Now try it when you get to try to lay down for three hours and see whether you feel the alert. You'll be gone. Try one hour, your wife will come and wake you up. <laughs> By the time you remain tea for the day. And then put your head on your Bible until you tear up the gate. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible says you should be able to answer everybody that asks you the reason for your hope. So don't do anything that you have no reason for. Hello? I think he says pray without season. Can you close your eyes and be driving? Because you want to pray? That means prayer is allowed with eyes open. There is no law to who opens and who closes. But if you must close your eyes to pray, then we only pray when you are the person where you can close your eyes. So it's not a law. Convenience is allowed. You are not worshiping God because before you learn that you can lead and be very proud. And be questioning God. How do you question God on their knees? They will know what's happening to you. Since the reality now, I've waited for your answer. I never saw anything. And it's only me. I'm sure you're hearing. You are a super intelligent being. Prove it to your world. Give the challenges of your life the required mental attention, mental concentration, mental processing. Stop spending your time. Invest it. It's a very, very valuable commodity. Invest it. It's a very powerful commodity. Invest it. Mental commitment to any given task guarantees practical attainment. So give your job the mental attention it requires. Give the challenges of your life the mental you know, attention it calls for. And you just be a man of solution. You become a practical man of solution. Hello? Every top thinker is a star. And every star is a top thinker. The man Joseph rose to the topmost. The man Daniel, Shira, Meshach, and Abednego, those four men rose to the topmost in the land of captivity. The use of their senses converted their captivity to royalty. We are going to experience a dramatic change this year. We have been asked to pray through too many things and we are not through up to now. I'm now asking you to think through them. God told me, he said, he's setting up a fire of mental revolution in the church. So the church can take her rightful place on the earth according to his eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it's time for high-tech reasoning. It's time for spiritual mindedness. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I said to be spiritually mindless is death and crisis. So it's time to pick up your mind and put it to work by giving it the exercises it requires. Steer it up and you have the full effect of it. If every householder, every head of family, where there is one little tension or another, we sit down for once and say, what can be regarded as the factors for this crisis and tensions? What were the things that angered me most? How have I communicated that to my partner? How much change was I expecting in that communication? Did I give room to a response in case my observations were wrong? And without one day of prayer and one I mean, a week of rigorous fasting, you go through it. I don't think we should need to continue like this. You had in church today, you can think through it. 
We have prayed for the past five years. We are not through. So let's think. Come on, let's think. You know, he said, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are, you know, good report, whatever things are this, they think on these things. Think on them until you take them. Think on them until they become yours. Think on them until you get at it. Oh, it takes. I spoke to a family on the phone and all of minutes. Just one, two, three, four questions. They saw clearly. Yeah, I think so too. I'm not thinking for the past seven months. That we are going through frustration that you don't need to go through at all. Take so what? I said, okay, what do you think to do about this, um, this matter? They said, well, we think. I said, no, that's going to be frustrating to that young child. You don't do that. You have very wild memories of what you have robbed him of, and that will pay, tell a lot on his life and future. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mind will get closed. And the prayers were going on as rigorously as ever. They proposed something, a movement, a trip, and I said, on the following basis, that will work. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You'll we'll have gone through all that stress and come back with nothing. Sit down first. That's the answer to where you are going. Sit down first and think through. It has an answer. Amen. 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 I'd like you to lift up your two hands. And grace for mental attention, grace for mental concentration. And say, I would like you to send them going without food. Give you them to eat. And the Bible said, this is said to prove them for he himself. What? He knew. He knew what he would do. The same for him, Lazarus is dead. He had born there two days later. By the time he arrived in Bethany, they had buried him four days. So let's go that we might wake him up. He has gone through the matter. He has an answer already. You need time to get at the best in life. But thank God you have time. You have what? Time. Don't let the enemy pollute your days. You have time. Don't wind away the time. You have time. Don't waste it to culture. You have time. Stop greeting the whole world around. You have time. Invest it. Be a sound thinker. Compare yourself to the art of thinking. Hello? I had my diary this morning and I saw it on the toilet tub. And I, I needed to be writing some things. When I was going there, I carried my diary and I was making the things I left on the toilet tub. You have a problem with that. My writers is still whether on ground or in air or anywhere. <laughs> you can't fail. <laughs> if only you will care to sit down and think and engage your mind in practical mental exercises, your generation will mind you. Amen. Come and say, Help me, Lord. There is good in the land where you are, but reasoning will get you at it. It will get you across to the place. He said, if you are willing and obedient to come now and reason with me, you will have access to the good of the land. You won't miss the good in your land. Can I hear you shout, amen? amen. You will not miss the good in your land. You will not miss the good in your land. So by the time we are here on Friday night, it will be celebration unlimited. Testimonies of thinking through will multiply. Testimonies of thinking through into favor will multiply. So let it be. In Jesus' precious name.